Uh, hello and how are you? Hey friends, welcome to the Shen Show. I am your host, Shut It All Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Yes sir, I sure am. Today is Sunday, April the 13th, 2020. And got a happy birthday shout out going out to Robert J. Broadbury. That's right, Bradbury and Mark Redburn. That's right. So for the two of you, I'm going to shout out a birthday song, and it goes something like this. I said, hey, yeah, I heard it's your birthday today. So happy birthday, I'm going to say. Hey, you know, Robert and Mark, you turned to one more year older today. So happy birthday to you, I said. I said, hey, yeah, I heard it's your birthday today. So happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, you're one more year older today. So happy birthday to you, I say. Cha 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 and many more. Facebook pokes. Ah, she poked me, she poked me. I think I poke her back. She poked me, she poked me. I think I poke her back. Facebook pokes. Dana Jennings, Karen Sanders, and Melissa Holtz. Each and every one of them poked me. So I'm poking you, poking you back. Facebook pokes. Seeing how Facebook is, I don't know, corona out or something. They're doing their Corona Corona thing, and they're not doing um, Facebook friendiversaries right now. And so, therefore, I'm doing the pokes. Anybody pokes me, you'll get a shout out, a poke shout out. It's a poke out. That's right. Um, Wallace Resale is uh, uh, responsible for what's coming up next. That's right, Wallace Resale. Wallace Resale on Facebook. Go to Wallace Resale Facebook, and then you will find the products of all kinds of tape and types. Go on there, take a look around, per peruse their Facebook site, then go to their messenger, let them know what number item you want, and how many of them, if they've got more than one in quantity. And then, hey, say, hey, this is what I want, and either Don or Rick will get back to you. That'll be Don or Rick Wallace. Hmm, they'll get back to you, and they'll let you know all the details about when and where. So, that's right. Wallace Resale bringing you the St. Charles local weather. Here we go. Right now, it's uh, 69 degrees outside. Now, ain't that a beauty? The sun's a-shining. The Well, it's mostly mostly sunny out there. sun's a-shining, and I'll tell you what. There's a... There, well, there's some, a few clouds in there. But that's okay, because tomorrow's supposed to get warmer. So, here we go. Anyway, some clouds this evening will give way to mainly clear skies overnight. Lows around 41 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds are going to be north at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then Monday, it says it's only 66, but hey, if today is 69, well, tomorrow's going to be 70-some. I'm hoping. Anyway, because I'm planning on going fishing. That's right, fish I am. Going to go catfishing, that is. So we're going to get her up and get her out and get her all done. All right, all right. Anyway, Monday, April the 20th. Sunny all along with a... Uh, sunny along with a few clouds. All along with a few clouds. A stray shower or a thunderstorm is possible. Highs around 66 degrees Fahrenheit. And winds are going to be west and northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. But that's uh, during the morning. I don't know when them clouds and stuff's coming in. And this uh, straw is dragging on my headset. Okay, better. Anyway, um, anyway, those clouds and stuff must be coming in later on during the day because, well, hey. Um, maybe not partly cloudy. Anyway, I'm going fishing around 2 o'clock, so I don't know. I don't care if it's a rainy or a shiny or a rain. If it's raining, I ain't going. But other than that, I'm going to try to make it down there. I'd like to see my son and, well, and his wife, too. Um, but anyway, I'd like to see him. I'd like to do some fishing. Fishing. And I don't know. He might have to stop by here and get some fishing equipment. I don't know. I doubt it because otherwise he would have. Because a bunch of, I still got a bunch of his rods and reels and stuff from long ago. 
Riverbank rods and reels, that is. Anyway, sunny along with few clouds, a stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Highs around 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds uh, west to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then a few showers in the evening will with clear skies overnight. Lows around 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And winds are going to be west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain about 30%. And then Tuesday, well, Tuesday, that's that's the day. Tuesday is going to be sunshiny all day long. That's right, mainly sunny skies. Highs around 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds uh, north to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then clear skies overnight. Lows around 43 miles per hour. 43 degrees, that is. And winds east to southeast at... Five, 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 five to ten miles per hour. And then Wednesday, April 22nd, partly cloudy skies early, followed by increasing clouds with showers developing late in the day. Highs around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. Rain likely. <laughs> rain likely. Mm, where'd it go? Uh, rain is likely uh, lows around uh, overnight. Rain's likely overnight. Lows around 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds um, east to southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain 100%. Rainfall around a half inch. And then Thursday, April 23rd, a steady rain in the morning. Showers continuing in the afternoon. Highs around 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds north and northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then um, chances of rain, 80%. And then partly cloudy skies. Lows around 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And winds are north to northwest at 10 to, or 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then Friday, Friday, April 24th, to wrap up the five-day forecast, would be cloudy skies with occasional rain showers. Highs around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds west to southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain 50%. And then cloudy with showers lows. Lows around uh, overnight. Cloudy with showers l around uh, overnight. Lows around 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain 50%. There we go. Boy, I tell you what. Sometimes my reading skills baffle me. All right. All right. All right. I've been trying to sing tonight. 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 I ain't figured out what's right. No way. No way. No songs for the day. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, do you know? Do you know songs for the day? Do you know, do you know any songs for today? Let's try some kitty songs. How about some kids from my grandkids? Songs from my grandkids. Mm, we can sing a few. Songs for all your kids, too. Gather your children around the old, the old box, you know, the radio. Turn your radio on, and turn your radio on. Uh, just listen to the music from the radio. This is gospel music from the radio show. Uh, turn your radio on, and turn your radio on. You know, I can do that one. Let's do that one. Song lyrics, turn the radio on. Come and listen to the radio station where the mighty host is having a sing. I turn your radio on, I turn your radio on, turn your radio on, I turn your radio on. If you want to hear the songs of Zion, come on from the land of, of the spring. Get in touch with God, turn your radio on, I turn your radio on, I turn your radio on. Radio on and listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on and the glory will share. I turn your radio on. 
I turn the lights down low, turn the lights down low, and I listen to the message of the radio. Get in touch with God, and yeah, get in touch with God, and turn your radio on. Turn your radio on, turn your radio on. I listen to the songs of the fathers and the mothers, and the many friends gone beyond before. I turn your radio on, I turn your radio on, I turn your radio on, I turn your radio on. Turn your radio on, to the supernatural, turn your radio on. I get in touch with God, I get in touch with God. I turn your radio on and listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on to your radio and glory will share. I turn the lights down low. I turn the lights down low and listen to the masters of the radio. Get in touch with God. I get in touch with God. And turn your radio on. Turn your radio on, turn your radio on, and listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on, turn your radio on, and the glory will share. Turn your lights down low, turn the lights down low, and listen to the masters of the radio. I get in touch with God, I get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. All right, sorry, had to do it, had to do it. I knew that song was out there somewhere. How about children's religious songs? Religious children's songs? God is so good. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, and we'll try that one. Song lyrics, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the itty bitty baby in his hands. He's got the itty bitty baby in his hands. He's got the itty bitty baby in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole white world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Do 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 do. All right then. Well, all right. How about I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. There's got to be a little light of mine, shining, shining, bright as kind. How about it? Song lyrics, this little light of mine. How about it? Y'all ready? Let's give it on a down. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine all the time. For you and me, I let it shine for you and me. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine for you and me. 
I won't let it shine, let it shine for you and me. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time for you and me. Let it shine for you and me. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine for you and me. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine for you and me. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, I have everywhere I go, yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, it's everywhere I go up. I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go up, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Well, everywhere I go up, I'm gonna let it shine. I said, everywhere I go up, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go up. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine all the time. Whoa, glory, hallelujah, since I let my burdens down. Glory, hallelujah, since I let my burdens down. Well, glory, hallelujah, since I let my burdens down. Let it shine, let it shine all the time. Burdens down low, burdens down low, since I let my burdens down. Burdens down low, burdens down low, since I let my burdens down. Burdens down low, burdens down low, since I let my burdens down. Oh, burdens down low, burdens down low, burdens down low, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I feel better, so much better, mm, since I let my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I let my burdens down. Hey, that's not the exact same song I was looking for, but hey, it'll do. It'll do in a pinch. In a pinch, it'll do, it'll do, it'll do, in a pinch, it'll do. The Bible song. B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for you and me. The Bible song is B-I-B-L-E. Mm, the Bible that's the book for me, oh, the Bible. That's the book for me, B L P I L E, Bible B, B I B B L E. All right, we'll try that. The Bible, that's the book for me, song lyrics. Ain't never heard this song. The B-I-B-L-E, yeah, that's the book for me. The B-I-B-L-E, yeah, that's the book for me. The B-I-B-L-E, yeah, that's the book for me. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I have a book, it teaches me everything that I know. And in this book, it shows me how I need to grow. In my life, I read it every single day. And it's the truth in my life, and it's my way. Oh, it's how God spoke, it how God spoke to me. That's right, it's how God speaks to me. The B I B O L E, yeah, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God in the B I B L E. The B I B L E, yeah, that's the book for me. The B I B L E is for me. Sometimes my friends they sing a different song, and I'm not sure if they're right or if it's wrong. So. I'm going to get this book off the shelf and learn from God, creator of life himself. It's the letter to me, the B-I-B-L-E. Yeah, it's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. How did life begin? It's in there. How did... Will the world end? Well, guess what? That's in there, too. 
and burning questions rolling around in your mind. Well, it's in there, and they're hard to find, but hey, the B-I-B-L-E, that's a book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yeah, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God in the B-I-B-L-E. So be I B L E, yeah, that's a book for me. So be I B L E, that's a book for me. I stand alone on the word of God in the B I B L E. Hey, you know what? These are some pretty cool songs. I didn't know these songs. And that one I have no idea whether I sing it right or wrong, but hey. It's the wrong song, it's a gone song. I've done sang it once before. He's got the whole world in his hand. Be careful, little eyes, what? Oh, you can get to heaven. Oh, you can't get to heaven, what? Peace, like a river. See, that's the one I think I would like. Song lyrics, peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Oh, oh, oh. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace. Like a river in my soul, oh, oh, oh. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul, oh, oh, oh. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love. Like an ocean, I got love. Like an ocean is in my soul. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain is in my soul. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got joy, I like a button, I've got joy, I like a button, I've got joy, I like a button in my soul. I've got peace and love like a river, I've got peace and love and joy like a river, I've got peace. Love and joy like a river in my soul. Oh, 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 oh. I've got peace, love and joy like a river. I got peace, love and joy like a river. I've got peace, love and joy like a river in my soul, deep in my soul. All right. Hey, I have no idea how that one goes either. Ain't never heard none of these songs, not an airy one. But, hey, I'm making them up as I go along. You know, I'm not making them up. I mean, I'm reading them, but I'm just putting my own my own twist on it. You can't get to heaven. Hmm. We'll try it, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what's next. Father of Fishers of Men. I know that one. Well, I mean, I do and I don't. Uh, deep and wide, deep and wide, deep and wide, deep and wide. I know a song about deep and wide. It's uh, it's going across a river. Uh, it might be called deep and wide. Let's see about it. Let's see if that's the one. Song lyrics: Deep and wide. Deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a flowing river, deep and wide, deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a river flowing deep and wide, wide and deep, wide and deep, 
as a river flowing wide and deep. Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a river flowing wide and deep. There's a river flowing wide and deep. Okay, that was the end of that one. How about it? Uh, let's see. Somebody rode across, rode a boat across a river at one point in time. And I know who that was. That was, uh, who was it? It was Michael, because he rode that boat ashore. Song lyrics, Michael, row your boat ashore. There you go. I know this one. Michael, row your boat ashore. Hallelujah. Michael, row your boat ashore. Hallelujah. Sister, help to trim the sail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, sister, help to trim the sails. Hallelujah. Jordan's river is deep and wide. Hallelujah. I've got a home on the other side. Hallelujah. Well, the river Jordan is a uh, chilly and cold. Hallelujah, the river is chilly in the body, but not the soul. Hallelujah, Michael, row your boat ashore. Hallelujah, Michael, row your boat ashore. Hallelujah, Michael, row your boat ashore. Hallelujah, oh, Michael, row your boat ashore, hallelujah, Michael, row your boat ashore, hallelujah. All right, all right, all right, now, how about that? It's 26 minutes into it, let's read, ah, uh, the kids, the kiddies, how about it, kids, y'all want a story? Well, good, because I'm fixing to read one for you. I think we're going to put this in Stuff for the Shin Show. That's right. Stuff for the Shin Show. Let me shut that down. And we're going to do a story. Today's story is going to be brought to you by Kimberly Dodd Little and her bling bling. That's right, rock and bling on Kimberly Dodd Little's website, uh, Facebook page. That's right. Go to Kimberly Dodd Little and when she opens up that page and starts that thing live, you can always buy the bling. Don't forget to bling. Bling, bling, bling. All right, hey, now this is uh, the Project uh, uh, Gunther eBooks. And uh, it's uh, The Tales of Mother Goose by Charles per uh, Perlet. Mother Goose, his name was Charles Perlet. Did you know that? Anyway, um, I'm going I'm to sing or read a couple of them. Produced by Gale Malawahalawahawala. Start of this project, Gutenberg ebooks, The Tales of Mother Goose. Oh, let's see. The Tales of Mother Goose is uh, first collected by Charles Perrolet in, in 1696. Okay, well, let's have some tales. I want a, I want a tale. Introductions, professors, peoples, literature, introduction, don't want no introduction. I want to see Cinderella or the little glass slipper. Nope, we done read Cinderella. We don't want to read Cinderella again. Let's see who's next. Do, do, do. And her godmother. Do, do, do. Man, this is a long story here. Okay, then the sleeping beauty in the woods. I think we done the Sleeping Beauty too, didn't we? We talked about it. We sure talked about the Sleeping Beauty in the woods. And then we're going to scroll on down here. Boy, these are some long stories, I tell you. My goodness, then Little Thumb. Now see, we didn't do Little Thumb. Once upon a time, there was a faggot maker and his wife who had seven children, all boys. The eldest was but ten years old, and the youngest only seven. And they were very poor, and their seven children were a great source of trouble to them, because not one of them was able to earn his bread. 
What gave them yet more un uneasiness was that the youngest was very delicate and scarce, and scarce any ever spoken a word, which made people take for stupidity that which was a sign of good sense. He was very little, and then born he was no bigger than one's thumb. Hence he was called a little thumb. The poor child was the drudge of the household, and was always in the wrong. He was, however, the most bright and discreet of all the brothers, and if he spoke little, he heard and thought the more. He even thought he heard and thought even more. There came a very bad year, and the famine was so great that these poor people resolved to rid themselves of their children. One evening, when they were in bed, and the faggot maker was sitting with his wife at the fire, he said to her, with his heart ready to burst with grief, You see plainly that we no longer can give our children food, and I cannot bear to see them die of hunger before my eyes. I am resolved to lose them in the world tomorrow, which may very easily be done, for while they amuse themselves in trying tying up faggots, we only we have only to run away and leave them without their seeing us. Ah, cried out the wife, could you really take the children and lose them? In vain did he did her husband re, re, present, represent to her their great poverty. She would not consent to it. She was poor, but she was their mother. However, having considered what a grief it would be to her to see them die of hunger, she consented and went weeping to bed. Little Thumb heard all that they had said, for hearing that was that they were talking business, he got up softly and slipped under his father's set so as to hear without being seen. He went to bed again, but did not sleep a wink all the rest of the night, thinking of what he had to do. He got up early in the morning and went to the brookside, where he f filled his pockets full of small white pebbles, and then returned home, and they all went out, but little Tom never told his brothers a word of what he knew. Then they went into a very thick forest, where they could not see one another, at ten paces apart. The faggot maker began to cut wood and the children to gather up sticks to make faggots. Their father and mother, seeing them busy at their work, got away from them unbeknownst to the boys and then all at once ran as fast as they could through the winding uh, through a winding bypath. When the children found that they were alone, they began to cry all uh, with all their might. Little Thumb let them cry on, knowing very well how to get home again, for as he came he had dropped little white pebbles uh, along the path. His pockets were full and all along the way, and then he said to them, Do not be afraid, my brothers. Father and mother have left us here, but I will lead you home again. Only follow me. They followed, and he brought them home by the very same way they had come into the forest. They dared not go in at first, but stood outside. And, uh, stood outside the door and listened to what their father and mother were saying. The very moment the faggot maker and his wife reached home, the lord of the manor sent them ten crowns, 
which he had long owed them, and which they never had hoped to see. This gave them new life, for the poor people were dying of hunger, and the faggot maker sent his wife to the butcher at once, as it was a long while since they had eaten. She brought thrice, thrice as much meat as was needed for supper for two people, and then when they had eaten, the woman said, Alas, where are our poor children now? They would make a good feast of what we have left here. It was you, William, who wished to lose them, and I told you you would should repent of it. What are they now doing in the forest? Alas, perhaps the wolves have already eaten them up. You are very inhumane, thus to have lost your children. While the faggot maker grew at least quiet, at last quiet out of patience, for she repeated twenty times that he would repent for it, and that she was in the right. He threatened to beat her if she did not hold her tongue, and the faggot maker was perhaps more sorry than his wife, but she teased him, so he could not endure it. She wept bitterly, saying, Alas, where are my children now, my poor, poor children? And she said this once so very loud that the children who were at the door heard her and cried out, all together here we are here we are and she ran immediately to let them in and said as she embraced them how happy i am to see you again my dear children you are very tired and very hungry and more poor peter my poor peter you are covered with mud come in and let me clean you peter was the eldest son and whom she loved more than all the rest, because, well, he was red-haired, as she was red-haired herself. They sat down to the table, and they ate with an appetite which pleased both father and mother, to whom they told how frightened they were in the forest, nearly all speaking at once, and the good folk were delighted to see their children once more. And this joy continued while the tin crowns lasted. But when the money was all spent, they fell again into their former uneasiness and resolved to lose their children again. And that no, former useless and resolved to lose their children again and that they might be the sure sewer of doing it, they determined to take them much further than before. They could not take talk of this so secretly, but they were overheard by little Tom, who laid his plans to get out of the difficulty as he had done before. But though he got up very early to go to pick up some little pebbles, he could not, for he found the house door double locked and he did not know what to do their father had given each of them a piece of bread instead of the pebbles by throwing crumbs all along the way they should pass and so he suffered he stuffed so and so he stuffed in his pockets their father and mother led them into the thickets and most ob obscure part of the forest. And then, stealing away into the bypath, left them there. Little Thumb was not very much worried about it, for he thought he could easily find the way home again by means of his bread path, which he had scattered all along as they came. But... He was very much surprised when he could not find a single crumb. The birds had come and eaten them all. Now they were now in great trouble, for the more they 
wandered the deeper they went into the forest not now now night now fell and there arose a high wind which filled them with fear and they fascinated that they heard on every side the howling of wolves coming to devour them the scared er darted to the, they were so scared dared to speak or throw, turn their heads and then it rained very hard which wetted them to the skin their feet slipped at the very step at every step and they fell into the mud covering their hands with it so that they knew not what to do with them little tom climbed up to the top of a tree to see if he could discover anything looking over on to every side he saw at last a glimmering light like that of a candle but a long way beyond the forest he came down and went upon the ground he could see it no more which grieved him so sadly however having walked from time to time with his brothers toward that side on which he had seen the light he discovered it again as he came out of the woods they arrived at last at the house where this candle was not without many frights for every off for every often they lost sight of it which happened every time they came into a hollow they knocked at the door and a good woman came and opened it she asked them what they wanted and little tom told her they were very poor children who were lost in the forest and desired to lodge there for the charity's sake the woman seeing them all so very pretty began to weep and said to them alas poor babes where do you come from do you know that this house belongs to a cruel org who eats little children alas dear madam answered little tom who with his brothers was trembling in a very in every limb what shall we do then the wolves are at the forest and surely we will devo be devoured us tonight if you refuse us shelter in your house and so would we would rather the gentleman should eat us perhaps he may take pity on us if we will please if it will be pleased to ask him to do so well the org's wife who believed she could hide them from her husband till morning let them come in and it took them a warm to warm themselves at a very good fire for there was a whole sheep roasting for the org's supper as they began to warm themselves they heard three or four giant raps at the door this was the org who was come home his wife quickly hid them under the bed and went to open the door the org at once asked if supper was ready and the wine drawn and then she sat himself then he sat himself down to the table the sheep was as yet all raw but he liked it the better for that because he sniffed about the right and to the left saying i smell fresh meat what you smell said his wife must be the calf which i have just now killed and filleted a small fresh meat i tell you i smell fresh meat i tell you once more replied the org looking crossly at his wife if there is something here which i do not understand as he spoke these words he got up from the table and went straight to the bed ah said he that is how you would cheat me i know not why i do not eat you too it is well for you that there that you are tough here is game which comes very luckily to entertain 
three orgs of my acquaintance who are to pay me a visit in a day or two. He dragged them up out from under the bed, and one by one the poor children fell upon their knees and begged his pardon, but they had to do with one of the most cruel of orgs, who far from home, having any pity on them, was already devouring them in his mind, and told his wife they would be delicate eating when she had made a good sauce. He then took a great knife, and coming up to these poor children, sharpened it upon a great whetstone, which he held in his left hand, and he had already taken hold of one of them, with his wife, said to him, What need do you it now? Will you not have time enough to-morrow? Hold your prating, said the org. They, they will eat the tenders. But you have so much meat already, replied his wife. Here are a calf, two sheep, and a half a pig. This is true, said the org. Give them a good supper, that they may not grow thin, and put them to bed. Well, the good woman was overjoyed at this, and gave them a good supper, but they were so much afraid that they could not eat. As for the org, he sat down again to drink, being highly pleased that he had the wherefore all to treat his friends he drank a dozen glasses more than ordinary which got up into his head and obliged him to go to bed the org was seven had seven daughters who were still little children these young ones had all of them very fine complexions but they all had little gray eyes quiet round n hooked nose and very large mouths and very long sharp teeth set far apart and they were not as yet wicked as wicked but they promised will be will to be they promised well to be for they had already bitten little children they had been put to bed early and they all seven in one bed with every one a crown of gold up upon her head there was in the same chamber a bed of the like size and the org's wife put the seven little boys into this bed after which she went to bed herself this is a long story Little Tom, who observed that the org's daughter had crowns of gold upon their heads, and was afraid lest the org should repent his repent his not killing them, and even got up about midnight, and taking his brother's bonnets and his own, went very softly and put them upon the heads of the seven little orguses and after having taken off their crowns of gold, which he put upon his own head and his brother's, and so that the org might take them for his daughters, and his daughters for the little boys whom he wanted to kill. Things turned out just as he had thought, for the org, walking about midnight, regretted that he had deferred till morning to do that which he might have done overnight, and it jumped quickly out of bed, taking his great knife. Let us see, said he, how our little rogues do, and not make two jobs of the master. He then went up and grabbed, uh, groping all of the way into the daughter's chambers, and climbed into the bed where the little boys lay, and who were all fast asleep, except little Tom, who was terribly afraid when he found the org fumbling about his head, as he had done about his brothers. He felt the golden crown and said, 
I should have made a fine piece of work of it. Truly, it is clear I drank too much last night. Then he went to the bed where the girls lie, and, having found the boys little bonnets, Ah, said he, my merry lads, are you there? Let us work boldly. And saying these words, without more ado, he cruelly murdered all his seven daughters. Well pleased with that he and had done, well pleased with that what he had done, he went to bed again. So soon as Little Thumb heard the org snore, he waked his brothers and bed them, put on their clothes quickly and follow him. They stole softly into the garden and got over the wall, and they ran about all night, trembling all the while, without knowing which way they went. The org, when he awoke, said to his wife, Go upstairs and dress those young rascals who came here last night. The orgus was very much surprised at the, this goodness of her husband not dreaming after what manner she had she should dress them but thinking that he had ordered her to go up and put their clothes so she went and was horrified when she perceived her seven daughters all dead she began by fainting away and was only natural in such a case the org fearing his wife was too long in do doing what he had ordered, went up himself to help her, and he was no less amazed than his wife at this frightful spectacle. "'Ah, what have I done?' cried he. "'The wretches shall pay for it, and that instantly pay for it, and that instantly.' He threw a little pitcher of water upon his wife's face, and having brought her to herself, giving, give me quickly, cried him, my seven league boots, and then I may go and catch them. He went out into the country, and after running in all directions, he came at last into a very round where the poor children were and not above a hundred pieces from their paces from their father's house they espied the org who went at one step from mountain to mountain and over rivers as easily as the narrow brooks narrowest brooks little thumb seeing a hollow rock near the place where they were to hide his brothers in it and crowded into it and himself, watching always what would become of the org. While the org, who found himself tired with his long and fruitless journey, for these boots of seven leagues greatly taxed the wearer, had a great mind to rest himself, and by chance when he sat down upon the rock, in which the little boys had hidden themselves, and as he was worn out with fatigue, he fell asleep, and after reposing himself some time, began to snore so fright fear frightfully that the poor children were no less afraid of him than when he held up his great knife and was going to take their lives. And little Tom was not so much frightened as his brothers, and told them uh, that they should run away at once towards home while the org was asleep, so soundly, and that they needed to be in any trouble about him. They took his advice and got home quiet, uh, quickly. Little Tom then went close to the org, pulled off his boots gently, and put them on his own legs. The boots were very large and long and large, but as they were fairy boots, they had the gift of becoming bigger or littler. 
according to the legs of those who wore them, so that they fitted his feet and legs as well as if they had been made for him. He went straight to the org. Org's house, where he saw his wife crying bitterly for the loss of her murdered daughters. Your husband, said little Tom, is in very great danger, for he has been taken by a gang of thieves who have sworn to kill him if he does not give them all his gold and silver. At the very moment they held their daggers at his throat, he perceived me and begged me to come and tell you and con conditions that he was in and they say and to say that you should give me all he has of value without retaining any one thing or other words otherwise they would kill him without mercy as his case is very pressing and desired me to make use of his seven logged boots, seven-legged boots, which you see I have on, so that I might make you the more haste, and that I might show you that I do not impose upon you. The good woman, being greatly fatigued, frightened, gave him all she had, for this org was a very good husband, though he ate up little children, little th Tom, having thus got all the org's money came home to his father's house where he was received with abundance of joy there are many people who do not agree in regard to this act of little th tom's and pre pretended that he never robbed the org at all and that he only thought he might very justly justly take off his seven-legged boots uh, because he made no other use of them but to run after little children. And these f uh, folks affirm that they are very well uh, assured of this because they have drunk and eaten often at the maggot maker's house. They declared that when little Tom had taken off the org's boots, he went to court where he was informed that there were very much in trouble about a certain army which was two hundred leagues off and anxious as to the success of the battle he went they say to the king and told him that if he desired it he would bring him news from the army before night The king promised him a great sum of money if he succeeded, and little Tom returned that very same night with the news, and this first expedition causing him to be known. He earned as much as he wished, for the king paid him very well for carrying his, carrying his orders to the army. Many ladies employed him also to carry messages from which he made much money. After having for some time carried on the business of a messenger and gained thereby great wealth, he went home to his father's, and it is impossible to express the joy of his family. He placed them all in comfortable circumstances, bought places for his father, and brothers, and by that means settled them very handsomely in the world while he successfully continued to make his own way. Okay, well there you have it. My goodness, that there was quite the, quite the ambitious story. Ooh, there's the other one I wanted to read the other day, The Master Cat or Puss in Boots. I will be getting back to that in tomorrow, for sure, for sure. But anyway, it looks like it is, I mean, for sure, it is time for our portion of the program called Our Daily Bread. And today's forecast, uh, <laughs> not forecast, devotion. Today's uh, devotion is the forecast's mistake. 
the forecaster's mistake. That's right, the forecaster's mistake. Well, they can tell you what the weather's going to be, what they think it's going to be, but it may not be. So, anyway, I'm going to be reading Jeremiah 23, 16 through 22. If you're keeping up with the Bible with Briscoe, which I really hope you are, because the Bible with Briscoe gives you a daily reading of the Bible, just two sections, a little piece um, out of the Old Testament and a little bit out of the New Testament, so that you don't get too much and too overwhelmed. Second Samuel 6 through 8 will be read today out of the Old Testament, and Luke 15, 10 through, or 1 through 10 out of the New Testament. So there you have it. Anyway, uh, today, Jeremiah 23, 16 through 22, the forecaster's mistake. Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a book bro. Okay, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. And they fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despair, despise me, the Lord says, you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. But which of them will, has stood in the counsel of the Lord? to see or to hear his words. Who, who has listened and heard his word? And see, the storm of the Lord will burst out with wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. I did not send these prophets, and yet they have run with their messages, and I did not speak to them, and yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. And there you have it, uh, our portion of the program called Our Daily Bread, Jeremiah 23, 16 through 22. And that, my friends, brings us to the conclusion or the end of the Shin Show. And so I'll be doing this song right here. Well, goodbye, my friends. It's a time to go. Oh, boy, I did I say goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. So goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you? Thanks for tuning in to the Shin Show. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, hey, I'll be here. And I hope that you are too.